Very good morning, brothers and sisters, uh, joining us for this morning's, this Sunday's worship service. And we welcome you, for those of, uh, for those of you who are with us here in the sanctuary. And also we want to welcome those who are joining us online, uh, whether live or at a uh, later recorded broadcast. We welcome you and we're glad that you can join us together as we come together on this day that the Lord has made to lift up worship and also to be in His presence to receive His Word for us today. And as usual, before we begin, uh, please join me and uh, to stand up as we prepare our hearts for today's worship service. The Lord be with you. I was glad when they say unto me, O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. God is spirit. We must worship him in spirit. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord now and forever. Amen. Let us all now join our hearts together to say to pray the collect for this morning. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's lift up praises. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty heavens. Praise Him. All the earth praise Him. Praise Him in His awesome power. Praise His great and holy name. Praise Him. All of praise Him. From the rising of the sun, let His praise be heard. From the east to the west, and the north to south, let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Praise Him. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty heavens. Praise him, all the earth praise Him. Praise Him in His awesome power. Praise His great and holy name. Praise Him, all the praise Him. From the rising of the sun, let His praise be heard. From the east to the west, and the north to south let everything that has breath praise the lord forever let everything in my soul praise the lord let everything that has breath praise the lord forever let everything in my soul praise the lord Praise Him. Praise Him in the sanctuary. Praise Him in the mighty heavens. Praise Him. All the earth praise Him. Praise Him in His awesome power. 
Praise Him, r i s e n holy name. Praise Him, all oh, the praise Him from the rising, from the rising of the sun. Let His praise be heard from the east to the west and the north to south. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord forever. Let everything in my soul praise the Lord. 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 Lord, we lift up our praises to you. We magnify your name. Majestic is Your name in all the earth, O oh Lord, our Lord. May we see Your kingdom come, Father. May Your will be done in all the earth. Sing, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, our Lord. Oh, how awesome are Your ways! How majestic is your name in all the earth, O oh Lord, our Lord. May we see your kingdom come, Father. May your will be done in all the earth, in all the earth. When I look at your heavens and the moon and stars, you set in motion, O oh God. I sing, O oh glory and honor, what is man that you are mindful, son of man that you would care for him. We sing, O oh glory. And honor, O oh Lord, our Lord. Oh, how awesome are Your ways! How majestic is Your name in all the earth, O oh Lord, our Lord. May we see Your kingdom come, Father. May Your will be done in all the earth. In all the earth, you gave dominion to your children, and you've crowned them, O oh Lord, with glory 
and honor so we sing of your name live our lives for your greatness O oh lord your glory and honor O oh lord our lord oh how awesome are your ways how majestic is your name in all the earth O oh Lord, our Lord May we see your kingdom come Father, may your will be done In all the earth O oh Lord, our Lord Oh, how awesome are your ways How majestic is your name in all the earth oh lord our lord may we see your kingdom come father may your will be done in all the earth the earth is full of the glory of god come make much of the name above all names creation cries out and every knee bows jesus we crown you O oh lord our lord the earth is full of the glory of god come make much of name above all names creation cries out and every knee bows jesus we crown you O oh lord our lord the earth is full of glory of god come make much of name above all names creation cries out and every knee bows jesus we crown you O oh lord our lord 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 oh how awesome are your ways how majestic is your name in all the earth oh lord our lord may we see your kingdom come father may your will be done in all the earth oh lord our lord oh how awesome are your ways how majestic is your name in all the earth oh lord our lord may we see your kingdom come father may your will be done in all the earth oh lord our lord oh how awesome are your ways how majestic is your name in all the earth oh lord our lord may we see your kingdom come father may your will be done in all the earth in all the earth all the earth we worship you you are worthy How 
awesome is your name in all the earth we give you all the glory as we worship at your throne how awesome is your name how awesome is your name in all the earth we give you all the glory as we worship at your throne holy is the name of jesus holy is the great i am ever worthy to be worshipped and adored lord of heaven and of earth how awesome is your name how awesome is your name in all the earth we give you all the glory as we worship at your throne in your presence there is healing as we call upon your name yes, true you in the name you experience his birth and forever will proclaim how awesome is your name how awesome is your name in all the earth we give you all the glory as we worship at your throne how awesome is your name how awesome is your name in all the earth glory as we worship at your throne awesome is your name how awesome is your name how awesome is your name in all the earth we give you all glory as we worship as we worship at your throne we worship at your throne as 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 we worship at your throne
centuries, mankind was looking for their God. That those who are so far away from you, didn't know who you were, came seeking for you. But Lord, you did not play hide and seek with us. You reveal yourself. You reveal yourself to Noah. You reveal yourself to Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. You reveal yourself to Job. You reveal yourself to Israel. You reveal yourself to us, who has nothing to do with Israel. Through Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, so that we might know you. What a powerful! loving good God you are that we might revere your name and be connected with our creator and receive life that is beyond the widest imagination that is far beyond the suggestion from the world that's who we are that's who you are thank you Lord for giving us such an opportunity to come to praise you and honor you. Lord, we give you all the honor and glory. We say that, Lord, we worship you this day. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning, God's people, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. Shalom. And welcome to our worship service. Um, Please uh, feel free. We know we know we are not we are we are not able to be physically uh, in, in in touch with one another. Just wish one another a blessed morning. Please be seated. Those of us who are joining us online, uh, we we are still facing some difficulties on uh, some audio uh, audio broadcasts. Uh, so so we hope that we hope that when you're watching this, it means that we are we are our recording is okay. All right. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we, uh, as we came together and this morning to worship the Lord, I, I just sense that there is going to be a shift. Uh, there's going to be a shift to, you know, the Lord is moving. The Lord is moving forward. Uh, he, is, he, is, he is unfolding, unfolding 
his best for us. And, uh, and you know, when, when the Lord blesses us, uh, it is not on our terms, right? Okay? Uh, when the Lord blesses, it's not like, you know, we, we dictate to Him what we want and how He should do it and when He should do it. Uh, but when the Lord wanted to bless us, He, he revealed Himself to us. He laid out a, 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 a path for us whether it is in our personal life, uh, in our family, in the, in, the, in the life of the church and mission, mission of, the, of the mission of the church. And uh, he, he laid down, he revealed himself first and foremost. Uh, if, if, uh, if you have been following us in this, um, on the series, on the series of, uh, of sharing or, or, of, or preaching in this uh, in desert stream, that you probably here every, every now and then quite often that we are encouraged to seek the revelation of the Lord because when the Lord reveals himself to us then it is for us to choose whether we will take that path or not huh? so that is our God he's a gentleman God huh? <laughs> he doesn't force us compel us to do what we are not willing to do but we must be prepared to live with the consequences of uh, not following. He's not, he's, not, he's not a tyrant, okay? In the, in the midst, in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in, in the midst of all these kind of challenges that come from the world, the flesh, from the devil, the Lord looked at us and said, there is a way out. I have done the first things I prepared it for you. I sent my son Jesus. I opened the door. I opened the communication. I opened the gate of heaven for you to draw near. Right? For you to draw near. When God sent his son Jesus Christ to come to, come to the world as we approach Christmas, oh, we are about a month away from Christmas, remember the... Uh, the, the, the greatest gift that God has given to us, He opened the door. You see, when the door is open, uh, Jesus, God has taken, you no, know, Jesus has come, God has done something coming to us. And the rest is for us to come to Him. Right? So sometimes we are in the, in the situation, we say, the Lord, Lord, would you, would you come to us? The Lord said, I have already come to you. In fact, when I come, I open a portal, a door for you to come to me. So that you receive from me revelation concerning your world, your circumstances, your, 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 your future. When I give that revelation to you, it is going to be like a map navigating through the dark waters of, of, uh, of sin and darkness and evil in this world. It is a map. It is a way as God revealed. Now, choose whether you want to walk in it. Now, that is basically, that is basically what, how the Lord, how the Lord re relate to us, right? In, uh, uh, in, our, uh, in our human experience, the choice is ours. So, it, with that, I feel that the Lord is, is saying, I am, I am making available to you power, power that is, uh, that is uh, unheard of, not experienced in the life of mankind. That if you tap into this, if you, if you take my words and you tap into this, you will see the kind of abundant life that Jesus has promised is a reality. Last week, we talked about the power of faith. This week, we want to look at the power of prayer. When do we need to pray? When do you think that we need to pray? When? Huh? Every time. But what would prompt us to pray? More. <laughs> Then other time, <laughs> when we have a need, what is the need? 
When we talk about there's a need, there is a lack, isn't it? I need food because I am hungry. I'm lack of food, right? I need a pair of new glasses because without which I cannot see very well. There's a lack. When there is a need, some accountants are here, there is a deficit. Right? There's a deficit in life, deficit in our supply, deficit in, uh, 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 in our lives, or there is, a def- there is a defect. I need to bring my car to the mechanic. Why? There's a defect. How many of us, we just bring our car to the mechanic, the mechanic asks us and says, what is wrong with your car? Nothing wrong, actually. I just want to let you have a look at how beautiful my car is. How perfect my car is. <laughs> no, none of us would do that. None of us do that. So, you see, a lot of Christians don't pray because they don't see that they have need. Because they don't see that there is a desperate need, desperate enough to trouble God. Now God is busy, you know, he's taking care of the Israel and Palestinian issue, you know. So, but what if there is a need that you and I are even not aware of? Now, that is the, that is the problem. That is a great problem. You know, one of our dogs just died, you know? Old age and also sickness and all the rest of it. So, when, when she was like, she was even having the condition, she was happy, and eating, like anything, like, like, like no tomorrow, going for a run, all that, while having, you know, a big lump on the, on the breast. There was, there was no need for a vet, correct? Until, until something went wrong, it kind of smell, you know, all that. Uh, but the wound is still very clean, but it just smell. So I call up a friend, uh, a, a, friend's, a friend's friend, a, doc, a medical doctor, a medical doctor say. Uh, be, before she was no, no, not, not eating, uh, so I, I, told, I told the doctor, uh, it, it, not, not a vet, a medical doctor, okay? Medical doctor say, well, as long as she's eating, just let her enjoy you know, life and all that. As soon as I put down the phone, the very next day she stopped eating. So um, then the two days didn't eat, I better call a vet, make an appointment. On the fourth day when she was not eating, called the vet, brought her there. Uh, the vet was uh, very careful and, 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 and went through a whole lot of su- suggestions to how to save this dog. And she was so healthy. Her blood test uh, was like, you know, uh, 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 compared to human blood test, the, the term is it's like a young man, you know, like a young lady. Her blood test was so clean and, and all the rest of it. And uh, they were putting her on, on drips. And so, that very that, that night, the vet said, said, "Why don't you let her stay uh, in the, or keep her in the clinic for one night, and stabilize her, and then uh, send send her back after a week, and then we do the we do the surgery. Wonderful." So the vet was very positive. I said, "Oh, she was so happy with uh, with the with the with the painkiller being uh, administered to her through the drips. Wonderful." Before he went home that evening, he, he said to his heart, tomorrow I'm going to call Kenneth and get your dog back and then next week we are going to, we are going to you know, fix her up. The next morning, the staff came in early in the morning. She died. There was no struggle. Not as if she was in pain. And, uh, and they say that she probably she had a cardiac, cardiac arrest, a heart attack. And, uh, and, 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 and she died. You see, so I, 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 I thought I'd up, update the human doctor, not the vet doctor, <laughs> the human doctor. Oh, I said, yeah. So the, yesterday I updated him. So he was so sad, you know. He, he truly an uh, animal uh, lover and said that just a gentle reminder, he said, when any of your, this is for general uh, public consumption, if any of your pets <laughs> are not eating, even for one day, don't wait for another day because it is an indication there is a need. There is a need. I didn't know that, you see. I didn't know that it was so severe. One day, don't eat. Huh? Also, don't wait already. But because she's such, she has such a good appetite, she doesn't eat 
Of course, because of concern. Next day, gave her a half, half a cup of milk. She finished it. He said, oh, okay. Oh. So, but the thing is this, that when we do not realize that there is a need, there is a deficit, there is a, a lack, it is potentially fatal. It is potentially fatal. So Jesus asks in a response to his disciples. The disciples say, Lord, teach us to pray. Uh, because in those days, the rabbi, the Jewish rabbis, teach their disciples to pray, except Jesus. So Jesus, Jesus up to that point, eh, up to that point. So when they ask Jesus, teach us how to pray. And Jesus say, you know, um, now, Jesus taught them how to pray the Lord's Prayer, right? Now, when do we need to pray? When there is imperfection in God's order, when there is a need. This need is defined as there is an imperfection in God's order. God's order for our health is to be healthy, right? So we are not healthy, there is imperfection. Therefore, we pray for healing, correct? When there's a war that's going on, God's perfect, perfect war is there, there, there should be peace. So we pray, and so on, right? So whenever there is an imperfection in God's order, it, it is an indication to us that there is a need. Now this imperfection, if we allow it to go on, uh, This imperfection, if allowed it to go on, it is going to cause tremendous effect. It's going to cause trouble. So Jesus, when he replied his disciples, when he was met with a request to teach us how to pray, he said in Luke chapter 11, verse 2 to verse 4. We're going to look at, start looking at that. Shall we read together? So he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread, as, and forgive us our sins, as he also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In this, he said, when, when Jesus asks us to pray, Unless it is a short prayer, right? We just finished praying yeah, the, uh, uh, the Lord's Prayer in its original form. Less than, less than 10 seconds. Jesus, as I say, that when, when, when God speaks to us, He doesn't speak any extra. He speaks only what is absolutely essential when He speaks. We better listen. So when Jesus was asked to teach the disciples how to pray, He said that this is how you pray. Obviously, it is important, right? If it's not important, he would not ask us to pray. He wouldn't ask the disciple to pray. We wouldn't be praying in the churches, you know, uh, every now and then to, to, uh, to, to recite the entire Lord's Prayer. So when Jesus said, when you pray, Jesus is saying there is imperfection in God's order. Because when do we need to pray, as I say, when there is imperfection in God's order? Where is the imperfection? Today we're going to look at eight areas of imperfection. In the Lord's Prayer, number one, when God is not honor or not hello or revere, when God's name this morning we sang the song, you know, uh, how awesome is your name? If God's name, who God is, is not honor, is not revered in society, in the way that we relate to one another in our value system and so on and so forth, there is a need to pray. And we pray, our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Let your name be revered. Let your name be honored. Let your name be lifted up. When there is an imperfection, when people are, are swelling about God's name in movies and things like that, using the name of Jesus just as a swear word, you know that the whole Hollywood industry needs prayer. 
You know, there are a generation of young people growing up not revering God's name, not honoring God's name. Jesus said, That is the time you pray because hallowed be your name. Let your name be honored and glorified. And people look, laugh at the name of Jesus. And people look at God's, God's value and begin to tremble underfoot. That is the time that we should pray. When should we pray? Let us just now say every time, because every time we face with all kind of imperfection around us. Because you see, if this imperfection is allowed, what will happen? Nobody will, will, will care about God. Is it important to us? Of course it's important to us. Because if nobody even, you know, uh, be, be concerned about God's value, we will not turn to God when we are in need. The world is at war with one small thing called the COVID-19, coronavirus. We are at war. We are at war in a, in a sphere that is invisible. Physical, but yet invisible. Who do we turn to for help? We turn to this God called vaccine. Even scientists say vaccine alone will not be able to save mankind from this threat of coronavirus. We just spoke with our daughter last night. We know that some European countries are going back into lockdown before Christmas. What about our nation? What about nation around us? Are we faced with another wrong? You know, when, when God is not revered, it's not honor, we do not take God seriously, men will think that we are God. And science is absolutely useful tools. I'm a scientist. I have a degree in science. I have an honors degree in science. I'm a scientist. But I do not worship science. It is a useful tool, absolutely useful tool. But when God's name is not revered, God is not taken seriously, we turn to science and anything else for solution in the world. When God's name is not revered, we better start praying. If we don't pray, it will escalate into a time that we will, we, will, we, will, we will look at God's creation with contempt. We will look at men and women and call men, women, call women, men. And call a man, man or woman, your choice. If God's name is not revered, yes, it has not been revered for far too long. It has developed to be what we, we see today. Now let me go on. Secondly, when God's kingdom is not fully established because God says, uh, Jesus says, your kingdom come. When Jesus asks us to pray, you pray, uh, you pray, uh, God's kingdom come, uh, means what? If God's kingdom is already here, why should he ask us to pray? Uh, you pray, uh, you pray uh, that you'll come to church. Uh, you're already in church. It's redundant, isn't it? Jesus never asks us to pray something redundant. Already happened, things can happen can happen automatically still pray uh. no need uh. so when Jesus asks us to pray because God's kingdom is not fully established yet when God's kingdom is not fully established right uh, you may need to look at your uh, your the notes in your in the in the prayer because I think they are they are, they are, they are working out the technical issue back when God's kingdom is not fully established, then we need to pray. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Let's read Re Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. It's good that you have your Bible with you. Yeah, okay, it's coming up. And let's read together. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Now, this is the will of God. His, the kingdoms of the world have become the kingdoms of the law of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. And Jesus says, pray that God's kingdom will come. God's rule will come. God's, God's, God's reign will come 
upon the kingdoms of the world. When Jesus asks us to pray, that means it has not happened yet. Revelation is a book that tells us what is to come at the end of age. At the end of age, it shall be, but it will not happen automatically because Jesus asks us, you pray. As I said, Jesus will not ask us to pray. It is going to happen anyway. Sometimes Christians feel that, you know, what Jesus said, it will happen anyway. So no need to pray. If, 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 uh, if God's kingdom is going to come automatically, we don't need to have power station. I don't need to stand here for three hours, you know, not, not, not three hours, most of three hours to, 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 lead us to lead us to pray. I better sit down quietly and have, enjoy, my, enjoy my dinner, have a cup of coffee after that, and maybe during switch roll. <laughs> Why do I trouble myself to do something that it is going to happen anyway? Why would you think that Jesus would ask us to pray if that is going to happen anyway? No, my dear friends, God's kingdom is not established yet. The righteous rule, the just rule of, of God is not happened in the world today. As long as we see that, there is, there is time when we pray. Do you see that now? Are you seeing it now? Don't indicate to me because the next thing I say, that, then you've got to pray. Think about it. Consider this. Kingdom of God is not fully established. Number three, when God's will is challenged and resisted in our lives, is God's will done perfectly in, in, uh, in your life? Because Jesus said, huh? I, I, I speak like a Singaporean Hokkien, huh? Okay. <laughs> your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When Jesus asks us to pray, pray that God's will be done on earth it is as it is in heaven. What does it mean? That means it's not done yet. Correct? Where is God's will done perfectly? In heaven. In God's realm. When God will in heaven, He said that I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your children. I'm going to, I'm going to expense your territory. People's life is going to be transformed. People's life are going to be healed. That's His will. His will is that all that none should perish. Remember what, 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 what the Word of God say? That His will is that none should perish. That means everybody will be saved. But is it happening, my dear friends? If it's happening, uh, hell will be empty. If it's happening automatically, hell will be empty. It is the will of God that none, absolutely not a single human being born to this world, shall perish in hell. My dear friends, we say that is the word of God. Sit back and relax. The world will be safe anyway. You, you hear this, it may sound ridiculous, but I tell you there is a school of theology who is like, which is like that. Everybody is going to be safe anyway at the end of the day. The first century, oh sorry, the, the second century uh, heresies still linger on today. So no need to pray for the, for the, for the lost, no need to preach the gospel. Because God's will, ma. It's God's will. It shall be done anyway. But Jesus says, pray, pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, God says, none should perish. On earth, everybody is perishing before Christ. Therefore, we pray. Do you see that people are perishing around us? Do you see that your will in... Are you, are you struggling with issues in your life that you know that it's not supposed to be there. And, and, and you read the word of God, they say that God said that this is a big thing, this is a big thing, this is a big thing, but it's not happening to me. It's God's will, it's not done yet. And Jesus says, pray. Pray that God's will will be done. Are we enjoying the abundant life that God is blessing, that has promised us through Jesus Christ? Or do we feel abandoned? Not abandoned, uh, we feel abandoned. That's not God's will. That is not, just accept it. Lah. If you feel abandoned, abandon. 
No. God's will is not done. Jesus said, pray. That's when you pray. That God's will be done in your life. In, in, on earth as it is in heaven. When God's will is challenged, how do we know God's will will be challenged? Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to verse 13. Let's read together. Then, Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 uh, to verse 13. Then he said to me, that, uh, that is to, 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 to Daniel, Then he said to me, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. This is what the angels say, right? Because when, when Daniel prayed to, pray to the Lord to, to give him understanding, because he, he saw, you know, the, a lot of things is going on, he, wasn't, he, he, he couldn't understand what was going on. So he, he, uh, he, he prayed to the Lord, and the angel came to him and said that, your words were heard, and I have come because of your words, in verse, uh, verse 12, verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now, I want to say to us that this, this is the thing. That the very day that Daniel prayed, God has already answered his prayer. He sent the answer. But it was, it was, he was resisted. The angel who brought the answer's prayer to Daniel were resisted. Oh, this is Daniel 10, 12 to 13. Oh, so we, we, we just give, if we can just turn to the Bible because uh, I think John is pretty busy uh, trying to sort out the te- technical issue at the back. So, so, yeah, so the answer already came. During the 21 days, the, there was something that was happening in the spiritual realm. God has prepared an answer. God has, has released an answer to come to Daniel. His will has been revealed to Daniel, but he was resisted for 21 days. During the 21 days, what was happening? First of all, in the spirit realm, there is this prince of the kingdom of Persia, a demonic entity, was resisting the angel from executing God's will in Daniel's life. Your prayer and my prayer, we don't need to take a lot of time to pray. Jesus says when you pray, don't repeat, repeat, repeat as if God cannot hear. No, God here. Then we concluded that because Jesus said that, Lord, you better don't pray more than lost prayer. Huh? Lost prayer. You don't repeat even the lost prayer in the, on the, in the, in the same day. Or otherwise, Jesus said, you repeat the prayer again. No, this kind of understanding is not taking into the whole counsel of the Word of God. We don't take into the whole of the Bible what the, what the Lord is revealing and speaking to us. So, when, when, the, when, the, when the will of God was to be executed on earth, there was resistance. During the 21 days, number one, I say that there was resistance in the spiritual realm. What else had, was happening? Daniel was praying and fasting. Why do we need to pray? Because the will of God can be resisted. We pray not to bend God's arm. We fast not to go on a hunger strike and say, God, you don't do it, I don't eat. No, my dear friends, we've been talking about it. Don't get, let the devil off the hook so easy. We've been giving holidays, paid cruise to the devil for far too long. Because you are, we are all blaming God for not answering our prayer. He can go on a holiday and he has been on a holiday for a long time. We are not threatening to, to him. If you think that all bad things, when the will of God is not happening in my life, God doesn't love me, something that I've done is wrong, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and God is angry with me, or, or God has other plans for me is to see me suffer. His plan is to see me suffer and enjoy himself up there. The devil can take a holiday, my dear friends. Last week we talked about it, and uh, a couple of weeks ago, he said, we say to the devil, your holidays is been cancer. We are demanding what you have stolen from us. We are asking you to get off our path. Get off, get out of the way. If you don't, I come in the name of Jesus. I remove you. I pray today. It didn't, it, it didn't happen. I pray tomorrow. 
Pray for 21 days, it happened good for 40 days. Until the devil is evicted. Out of the way of the will of God. Jesus says, Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Number four, when God's supply is hindered, because Jesus said, Give us day by day our daily bread. Hey, God give us food anyway. Is uh, why why do you still ask? Are we are we not trusting God for God's supply of all our needs, our daily bread, our food, and so on, our needs in every part of our being, our spirit, soul, and body? Are we are we not are we not lack of faith if we need to ask them every day, a day by day, well, huh? So Jesus here, here said that day by day, ask for day by day. Let me every day you ask. Why? Because God's supplies can be hindered, can be hindered and stop coming. Just like God's will, ex- execution of God's will can be hindered, God's supply also can be cut off. If you are faced with difficulties in your business, in your, in your work, pray because God says that day by day, Jesus said, day by day you pray. Because after we pray once, how many times do we need to re- remind God? God is not, God is not, you know, God is not forgetful. You need to remind Him every day. I, am, I was a bit forgetful this morning. Before I went upstairs to change, I said, I want to make myself a pot of coffee. And I forgot. <laughs> coffee is so important, right? <laughs> In the morning, right? How could I forget? So I probably need to put a reminder everywhere, you know, the fridge there, make a cup of coffee, make a cup of coffee, you know. But God is not like that. He doesn't need to be reminded every day. God, give me oil fun now, or today got to eat one or God, huh? No. But it means that it will be hindered and resisted. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 to 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, two, uh, two, two to 3. Let's, let's read together. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know that there was what was in your heart, whether you would keep His commandments or not. So He humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know nor did your fathers know, that He might make you know that all the men shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. It was the 40 years in the wilderness. Did God need to do anything to supply for, for the Israel? But after all, they have sinned against Him. No, He didn't need to. But all of His grace, of His love for Israel, His supply. How did God supply the, uh, the, the need of the, 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 the Israelites in, uh, in the wilderness? By giving them every day manna and also send quails, right? Birds. The candidates call yi kap. Wow, every day eat yi kap. Mdima, huh? Tamkusu, no, huh? But anyway, they, they work a lot, lah. They work a lot, so they burn off the cholesterol. <laughs> so every day, you know, the Israelites got scared, huh? Today, uh, so much. Hey, better collect some. But they forgot they didn't have fridge, you see. So they collect it. They want to wait until the next, next morning, all, all rotten. God said, no. You trust me. Every day, I will provide for you. Every day, every day, I will provide for you. God was doing all these things, as we see here, to humble you and to test you. What was in your heart? Do you truly believe in my words, in my promises? The supply, the supply that we receive from the Lord is promised already. But sometimes things can come in the way to, to shake our faith. We look at today we finish for the Israelites. They finish the manna already. They finish the last bit of manna. Tomorrow gone or not. And that is the challenge of faith. When our faith is being challenged, pray. Pray. That is the time that we need to pray. We need to pray in the Spirit. We need to pray according to God's words. 
We need to pray until faith arises in our heart. When our 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 work, our you know our business is facing so many challenges in this coming year, I believe that some of us will 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 will, will probably see a lot of this happening around us. But we as God's people, what do we do? And Jesus says, pray. Day by day, give us our daily bread. And point number two, Jesus, yeah, God says that so that men will know that they should not live by bread alone, but men live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord, because the word of God, the promises of God, does not only promise us material financial supply, and also the supply in our soul, in our spirit. What is your need? A lot of people say money cannot buy happiness, but men, but money helps. But it only helps; it doesn't buy happiness. People who are in lack of financial resources say, "Wait, what are you talking about?" I remember that one of the one of the uh, richest men in uh, in Asia, Lei Ka Seng, huh? Lei Ka Seng, who is uh, who is Lei uh, Ka Seng? Ah? Huh? The, yeah, I think I think someone here is also called. Huh? Who? Which one? Penaya. Ah, your name is a powerful name, you know, because the richest man in Asia. He was one of the richest men in Asia. Now, rich, no, when when he was interviewed, when he became multi multi, why we call it multi might mal or multi-billionaire, he was being interviewed. What was the happiest moment in your life? He pondered for only a little while. He said that it is the time when I first got my first month of salary as a worker, when I came to work. And I used the money, I bought an ice cream. I went to, I went to, you know, the seafront. I sat there and I tasted ice cream. That was the most beautiful moment in my life. Some people hear that and say, "You're more cultural. Yes, you're multi-billionaire. You can buy anything." And you're telling me that the only thing that makes you truly happy is a piece of ice cream you bought with your first month pay. My dear friends, you know when the pasture is always greener on the other side. When he say that. When he, it was an interview, a public interview. When he said that, I know I, I, I understood what he was saying. There was it's it's like exactly this. Man should not live by bread alone. Something that is deep inside us needs something else, far beyond physical, uh, you know, uh, 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 needs being satisfied, financial, material, and all the rest of it. There is something deeper. The money cannot buy. It is not the ice cream; it is a whole circumstance. Now he could buy trillions of ice cream of the same type with his money. Maybe more than trillions with his pocket money, money that he dropped accidentally out from his wallet. But he said, "Is that one?" Because something inside was satisfied. My dear friends, when we are in need, when we are hungry, empty, at not at rest, that is the time we turn to God and say, "God, I need you, day by day." That 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 man shall not live by, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Number five, when we sin, Jesus says, "Jesus says, forgive us our sins." You do not have sins? Oh yeah, okay, right, sure. Then that's it. We need to pray. Since life is marked, is trail in our lives, it impact our whole being. Sin allowed to dwell in us, 
evil begin to emerge. We'll talk about this. The progression, how sin can, can, uh, can, can, can uh, produce evil. And therefore, Jesus says, when you sin, deal with it. When you have sin in your life, when you're struggling with sins, deal with it. Not just we sin as an act of sin, but we are struggling in sin. We deal with it, my dear friends. When God's, when we sin. Number six, when we are affected by the sins of others. Jesus went on to say, and we also, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Sin has been described as a debt. Everyone who is indebted to us, everyone who has sinned against us, who owed us an apology, who owed us a justice, who owed us all kinds of things. Jesus says, forgive them, forgive them, forgive who? How, how many? Everyone. Everyone. Whenever we have struggled with forgiveness, we pray. We pray. Because unforgiveness only makes us feel... You know, in unforgiveness, uh, the whole relationship where unforgiveness is, the one who suffers most is the one who does not forgive. And Jesus said, no, you pray because God's will for you is that you should live in peace, live in freedom. Unforgiveness causes sickness in the body. Unforgiveness, holding on to unforgiveness, causes people to live in torment. Unforgiveness causes people to die also cannot die. I tell you seriously. I tell, really tell you seriously. There are some people who are struggling in sickness. They are bedridden. They cannot die. Because there is a spirit of torment tormenting him or her. Because of unforgiveness. Until, unless the person says, that I forgive. And actually, I pray for people who are like that. At one point, I was actually thinking that my, my gift thing is to pray for people that they could live very fast. Seriously. And uh, I still remember <laughs> a brother of mine that is a, a 90-year-old, 90 or 92-year-old nine, grandmother, bedridden for many years. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I visited her and, uh, that, that day and it was really, really, very bad. So I, I pray she could hardly communicate with me. But all her vital signs, everything else is very much intact. So, so, so I pray and ask her, would you, would, you, would you want to receive Jesus? Would you want to, you know, um, sort out whatever sin in your life? No, says, I'm not coming here to condemn you. I'm coming to say to you that Jesus can forgive your life, uh, forgive your sins. I said, you free. say, yes. She nodded, and I pray. And I asked her whether you want to, you know, anybody whom you have uh, uh, wronged you, are you willing to, 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 to forgive? She didn't answer me immediately, but tears running down the corner of her eyes. And I said, Auntie, I actually call Auntie, I should call Popo. Anyway, so I call Auntie, I said, Auntie, um, Jesus has already forgiven your sin, my sin. He released us. How can we release them? So she said, okay. She nodded and I prayed. In all this, she just not, didn't have any words exchanged. So I was happy. The family was happy. Gave me some, some, some kuei to eat and then I, I, I went off. The next day, this friend called. I said, Kenneth, thank you for coming to visit my grandmother and pray. She passed away very peacefully <laughs> early this morning. It happens very often when I never do, do visit it. But don't, but don't worry, huh? So because... <laughs> that, is not my, that, is not my, that is not my anointing, right? <laughs> it happens to my own uncle, you know, struggle, in pain and all that. He could only respond to me. Oh, then I talked to him and he was so happy. At the end of the prayer, he opened his eyes. There were tears in his eyes. He couldn't say a word anymore. He was so sick. Also, the same thing the next morning, early in the morning, passed away. Uh, probably that's, that's what happened to my dog also. Oh, I say. <laughs> 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 because I stroke her, but I say, 
I said, I said, her, her name was Blackie. I said, Blackie, Blackie, you're a good girl. You're good. Everybody was telling her, you're a good girl. You're a good dog. You live a good life. You brought so much joy to so many people. You, you're given birth to close to 80 puppies, you know, that kind of thing. So, so I just stroked her, stroked her, while waiting for the blood test result to come out. Lah. So, so stroked her, stroked her. That's why she was so happy. <laughs> and she passed away the next morning, early morning. Oh, so early morning, huh? no, no, no struggle. Well, coming back to unforgiveness, we are affected by the sins of others too, because there is a spirit of torment that enemy can send to torment us. People die also cannot die. Seriously, seriously, my dear friends, I'm not making up stories. You know, sometimes we need to pray for the spirit of torment to live. As soon as we pray that people who are holding on to their life, senior, very, very super senior people, they just went peacefully. And this friend of mine was saying that the first time I realized that it could happen was this friend of mine uh, uh, attending another church, another Anglican church. But anyway, he, he, he said that, thank you. I said, oh, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. I said, we, we, were, we were looking at her. She was just wouldn't let go. The word was that she, she wouldn't let go. We, we don't know what she was holding on to. She wouldn't let go. So after you pray for her, I don't know what you pray for her, like how you pray for her, but the next morning she went peacefully. And the family was actually quite glad because it was so tormenting to see her being tormented in unforgiveness, in bitterness, in sin, in fear perhaps. So pray. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, pray. That is uh, number six, number seven. When temptation comes in life, in James chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Let's read it together. In James chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. We look at Deuteronomy chapter 8. We look at James chapter 1. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we need to draw a distinction. God tests us, but He never tempts us. What's the difference between testing and tempting? Testing means that it is not meant for destruction. It's more not meant for death. In the two verses that we read in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 to 3, when, when, when God said, God led all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you, to know what is in your heart, whether you will keep his commandment or not. So he allowed you, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, not to hunger unto death. But he fed them daily, faithfully with manna. Right? Hotel, wilderness, breakfast included for 40 years. That's how God tests us. So we look at this, we cannot apply this and say that when we are faced with temptation, James say, don't say God allowed this. Because God does not allow temptation to come to us. He allowed testing to come to us and immediately He has a solution on the other side. He doesn't let us fall. The Lord was described as the mother eagle in the book of Isaiah that he, she stirred up her nets and lets her eaglets drop from the, from the, from the high nets. He, she allowed it, in the Word of God says she allowed it, she allowed the eaglets to drop, but never intend for them to die, to perish. She, he allowed it because he was hovering over them flying down and we were willing to just catch them with her wings if they cannot make it. That is God. If you are faced with difficulties in your life and you are dying, not physically dying, huh? you are losing like anything. You are in torment. That is not God. When temptation comes to you beyond that you can bear. God did not allow this. You can't see my mouth. I will almost say that. Read my lips. God did not allow temptation to come to us. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, God will not allow any temptation to come upon us that is beyond our strength. When it does, He will, he will not also allow 
anything that our strength cannot bear. He will supply the strength. If you don't have the strength to face the difficulties, the challenges in your life, pray because that is from the enemy, not from God. Know our God, different shape. What is testing? What is temptation? Not every calamity, hardship beyond our ability that comes into our life is allowed by God. No. My dear friends, it's no. It is beyond what you can bear. It is not God. It is the enemy. Lead us not into temptation, Jesus said. Number eight, but deliver us from evil. When there's evil in the world, do you find that there's evil in the world? Oh yeah, there's evil in the world. When there's evil in the world, when there's temptation, pray. When there's the enemy trying to force us out of our way, our destiny, pray. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, let's read together. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. Evil in the world sometimes can be very subtle. We need to pray that the Lord, like watchmen pray, that the Lord will show us where evil dwells. How evil is, 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 is infiltrating into our lives, is infiltrating into our family, infiltrating into the church, infiltrating into our society, in our nation. And sometimes it's, just, it's more than just analytical skill. When I was doing this, uh, preparing this, and I, and I, uh, and I, I, I remember the story you know how Singapore was, was, was taken by the Japanese, right? Some, 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 some of us know, some of us know, uh, know the story. The, the Japanese army was already, has invaded Malaya, right? They were coming down. So the British uh, uh, soldiers re retreat into Singapore and that was, that was their fault. Singapore was easy to, to guard, huh? Only one way down. So they put all the firepower there. No way they can come. Right? Unless they come from the sea. But the, the, the army was already in Malaya. So they, were, they were, we were watching. How Singapore was taken because the Japanese did not come in tanks, in trucks. They came down to Singapore by bicycle. By bicycle. They were watching for tanks, for loud cars, big troops, at least for soldiers. They came now on bicycle. I was told there were only 20 bicycles. They infiltrate into and disable and disarm the firepower of the British forces. Then the tank came. Evil, look at this. The enemy is lurking, walking around like a Roman lion seeking whom he may devour. If a lion is roaring and roaming around, that means there is a place for them to roam about. Where do you think that they are roaming? The enemy. The devil is invisible, right? Where do you think they are roaming? They are roaming around our schools, looking for our children to devour. They are roaming around where? your workplace seeking whom he may devour. When men begin to agree with his lies, that's where he pounds. There is no area whom he is roaming around where the cyber space. The enemy is roaming around. Today our live stream is not working. And those of us who are here in the sanctuary, you came. Before we have online uh, live streams, uh, 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 this thing, uh, worship and uh, broadcast and, 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 uh, and, and all that, the people who came, came to church, they were hindered. 
car didn't start la, car could not scratch la. I've heard so many stories about that. Children suddenly become very, very don't know difficult la. Huh? Dogs die la. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> There are all kinds of little, little things that stop us from coming. And I still remember there was, there was a father and a daughter. He has been hindered from coming in this church. Huh? Those, he, those of us probably in the Chinese service, you probably remember him. He, he, was, he, was, he has quite a story. But the long and short of it was this, that he has been, he has, he has, he has, he has, you know, he has have given so many opportunities to come to Jesus for close to 40 years, he was hindered. Some of his best friends uh, in his hometown were Christians, but nobody, nobody actually brought him to, to, to Christ. He was, so, he was so weird. It was first so weird. And here in KK, when he came here, and he, and, he, and, he, and he actually came to know Christ. Now, when, 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 when he first came to know Christ, he, he would come to church, uh, that was of course pre-pandemic, he would come to church at 10 o'clock waiting outside to, to wait for the 11 o'clock Chinese service. So I told him, why do you come so early? He said, I'm not going to be hindered anymore. I've been stopped from coming to church for 40 years. I will not be hindered. I said, it's hot. You come here and say, no, no, it's okay. 10 o'clock, come to attend the 11 o'clock service, my dear friends. Because he said, I will not be hindered. I don't want to miss some of our Chinese uh, service uh, congregation. But they, they were hindered in their life to come to God. They said, I will not be hindered. Nowadays, we still have some people sitting in the cars, came inside here when we first had this uh, first reopener. Uh, a lot of them couldn't pass because their temperature was so high because they were sitting in the car for too long, you see. So I said, please, you come. The, the last time I said, come, you open, I will open up, say, you go upstairs and wait for the service. But I said, I will not be hindered. My dear friends, the enemy is hindering us. He's roaming around in our territory. We are not superstitious, everything also of the devil, but the devil can use anything. A car breakdown, not because God sent, and I'm sorry, not, not, not because the devil sent. Some, somebody to, 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 to mess up the car. No. The enemy can use all kinds of things to hinder people from coming to enjoy God's presence, enjoy God's blessing. And knowing that, deliver us from the evil one. We pray. The cyberspace. You know that there are young people, students, who play games so much on the cyberspace were being demonized. I'm not talking somebody in America, right? I'm talking somebody in KK. What do our children watch online? What about online gaming? Huge business, right? We we're just told that any particular online gaming Establishment, uh, the turnover is bigger than 40 or spot total. That is where the enemy is roaming about. My dear friends, don't be like the British soldiers watching for the big tanks. Ask the Lord to review the bicycle. Coming down into our territory, seeking whom may devour. Sometimes when we pray, not because we have something to pray, we pray the Lord reveal to us where the, where the battle line is. We have all this reason to pray. Some of our young people's minds are completely captured by the enemy. Completely uh, desensitized by the enemy towards evil, towards sin, and completely desensitized towards the holiness of God. Do you see that around you? Young people, do you see that in school? Do you feel that sometimes you're lonely? Talk to your, talk to your children, please. Talk to your young people. Sometimes they feel that they're so lonely. 
Because the values that the schools, university talks about are often uh, values that does not revere, hello God's name. Sometimes the more I look at it, I say, Lord, I should really be praying 24-7 all by myself. How, how do we tackle all this except to pray? This coming Tuesday, I hope that we will come together to pray. Whether online or whatever form, wherever you can. I know that some of us are, have responsibility, has uh, duties, and sometimes just mere, uh, you know, tiredness. That's okay. But, but do, not, do not stop praying because Jesus says, when you pray, when you pray. Wrestle in prayers, my dear friends. Never give up on the word and promises of God. What is all the foundation? What is the basis for us to come together to pray? Ask the worship team to come and, and sing us this song. And that we, you know, when Jesus asked, told his disciples to, to pray, before hello be your name, the first thing that Jesus says was this when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven. Our confidence of God hearing us to pray never because that He is good and I'm, I'm bad or He is merciful, He is gracious because He is our Father. Our confidence to pray that we will overcome, we will prevail is first and foremost that we know we are God's children. You know, powerful prayer. Powerful, powerful prayer. I was, I was, I was being asked a question I was being asked the questions uh, just this week by one of my students and say that and, uh, and he say that you know does God listen to people who do not know Him? Yeah, I say God of course listens to prayers of all people but to avail the power of prayer the power of prayer To transform life, to resist the enemy, to release what the enemy has been locking, has been blocking us from enjoying the good things of God, the good things that the enemy has locked away. The power to resist him, the power to dismantle his structures, his lies, the power to defeat him, the power to kick him out of our territory, the power to wrestle for our children, for our community, for our nation, for our next generation. The power to turn things around. The power to usher in heaven into earth. That power is only reserved for children, my dear friends. It's only reserved for children. I told my students, they say that God hears our cry. Everybody's cry. God is merciful to everybody because He loves the whole world the same. My dear friends, how many times do we pray? We say that God, I need your grace. God say, I have given you grace and now you are my sons. And when Jesus taught this prayer, He was saying to them that you are praying as sons, my disciples. You are not praying as one of those in the world who did not know Him, no, no relationship with Him. He is your Father and therefore the power of prayer the power to break the gates of hell is available not to any one. I almost said Tom, Dick and Harry because some of us are named Tom. I know. So I don't want to, I don't want to mention that. But not to, available to anyone. You and I are privileged people, my dear friends. You can pray and we you can pray and turn things around because He is our Father. Hear our prayer we are your children and we're gathered here today we're gathered here today hear our cry we need your mercy and we need your grace today hear us as we pray 
in the spirit of your sons that Lord that you have made available the power of prayer the power of prayer is made available to all of us to tap into because this power of prayer is only reserved for sons Lord that men may pray but when sons pray heaven moves earth is shaken the enemy's kingdom is broken down the gate of Hades is shaken Father I pray oh God that would you fill our hearts oh God with such deep assurance oh God that Lord we not look around primarily looking for prayer points Lord sometimes we need to pray on the same thing but Lord we will look around and open our eyes to see the needs around us the deficits around us the deficiency around us that we might pray and see you move powerfully in favour of us in favour of us to your glory to your glory Father we live up to you ourselves we pray that oh God that this is may this be May this, may this time that we will desire to move on to a new level because you are moving, you are making available power that is, that is reserved for your church. Oh God, when power is released and reminded, you know that we know that, oh God, breakthrough is in front of us because we need, to, to, we need your power, the power from your own hands to break, to, to break forth and break through to the next level. Father, we lift up to you ourselves and lay before you our hearts. Would you come? Would you come, O oh God, and encourage us and strengthen us and stir us up for battle? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, worship team. Once again, a very good morning, brothers and sisters uh, joining us here in Desert Stream. And also, we want to welcome our brothers and sisters who uh, are joining us online. I'm not sure whether uh, you were able to 
um, join us live, but in a, we nevertheless we welcome you if you're joining us in a recorded um, service. Uh, we hope to uh, broadcast this uh, this evening at 8 p.m. And uh, I have several announcements to bring to us this morning. Uh, the first one is our power station will continue on Tuesday uh, from 7 to 10. Join us together here in the sanctuary. And also if uh, you are unable to come here physically, uh, do join us online as well. On Tuesday itself, we will provide the Zoom link uh, so that you can, um, you can join us uh, online. The next announcement is our diocesan prayer meeting. We'll continue on every Saturday from 10 a.m. until about noon time. So the link uh, is the same. It will be provided uh, as the week progresses. Um, we want to encourage you to continue to give into the diocesan uh, mission fund. Uh, just perhaps uh, some information for all of us. Um, the diocese requires quite a lot of funding uh, in order uh, to, to, um, to, to, to pay into this fund. The funds is used uh, for mission work. Uh, of course, our mission work is in Thailand, it's also in Miri, and also in uh, Indonesia, uh, the area where we call Kaltara, uh, which is uh, on towards the um, towards the east of Kalimantan. And a lot of this work requires uh, a lot of funding. Um, generally, every year, the, the fund itself requires about 250,000. Um, most of these funds goes to the payment of, uh, of the mission workers who are non-Malaysian and also the priests. So uh, a little bit uh, more information for us is that um, the, the funds is is um, is um, the, we the the funds we use the diocesan assessment to to provide for the funding for this fund. However, the diocesan assessment, uh, for our information, just caters for about twenty percent of what is required uh, by the the mission fund. So it's it's really not enough to to generate the sort of uh, finances that we need um, to, in order to sustain the mission work. So I want to encourage us um, to give and to give generously uh, into the mission fund. Uh, you can do so by, uh, by, um, by dip making the deposit uh, into our bank account or you can do so by dropping an envelope here or you can do so by using the Do It Now uh, app in order to make the deposit. But when you do so, please uh, make a note there and let us know that you are giving into, uh, into these specific funds. And also, we want to encourage you, uh, for those who are giving the Lord's tithe and offering, uh, do so, you can do so in the same manner uh, through the, uh, the Do It app, uh, Do It Now app, or through the bank deposit, or by dropping an envelope here. And finally, uh, is the last announcement is that uh, for those who are parents, you want you wish to bring your children to to church. Uh, we want to just remind you uh, to let us know beforehand as to uh, towards the end of the week, maybe on Saturday or maybe on Friday. Let the let the church office know uh, when you intend to 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 bring your children to worship with you. Uh, together, so that uh, the church office may be made aware of this and also uh, prepare uh, and do the necessary. Okay, that is the last announcement for this week. And I pass the time back to uh, Ken and Kenneth for the blessing. Thank you. Let us stand and uh, receive the blessing of the Lord. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, sons of the Most High God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, 
Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead.